Hi, Ravi Chakra here. I'm going to share some thoughts on chi and on electricity. And I certainly don't know all the answers or anywhere near that, <clears throat> but I feel I have something to say. So we do things like qigong, taiji, massage, um, stretching, doing all different things that we feel a lot of chi. We can actually feel chi. What are we feeling? Well, that's a good question. What I think we're feeling is the movement of the cells and or some sort of electricity which is involved. And it results in a sort of tingling sensation, a sort of squirming sensation. And we say, well, I'm feeling chi. So let me start with some basic things. One, if you go back billions of years, life existed only as single cells. Bacteria, things called protists, one-celled organisms. <clears throat> But these one-celled organisms were able to reproduce, they were able to absorb nutrients, they, some of them were able to protect themselves, to be able to move around, to be able to um, avoid prey, avoid obstacles, um, act as prey, and they didn't have eyes, they didn't have ears, they didn't have muscles, they didn't have a nervous system, no organs, and yet they were able to do these things. I'll put a link below to protests, which you can see them doing these things. They, they still exist. Now, when it comes to us human beings, we are composed of on the order of tens of trillions of cells. That's American trillions, not British trillions. And these cells have specialized functions, you know, the different organs, the different parts of the body, and they seem to have a life uh, force, a feeling of self, um, some sort of self-preservative aspect to them. But they also need to, in order to pres preserve their own living um, uh, being alive, they have to be able to communicate with other cells so that the functions will keep me alive, in my case, because if I die, so do they. So they have to communicate with each other to, or, to regulate their functions. Now that's not the only way that they can do that, but it is a very primitive way. And to be able to um, know on some level what the rest of the cells of the body are doing. So that, how is that accomplished? Well, there are two ways that I can think of. One is electricity and electrical uh, currents. It could, the another way could be movement and cells can move. Individual cells can move and should as the ones in our bodies. <clears throat> When they move, they can, if they do it in unison, they can um, cause a, a wave motion that goes through to other parts of the body. Maybe that's what we feel. But maybe they have a way of communicating beyond that. Who knows? But they certainly need to do that and I think do so. So we feel that as a tingling we feel that as a squirming under the skin, and we call that chi. Chi obviously is much more than what we're feeling. Other things that we feel are when we do stretching, um, massage, rubbing, jostling, um, pressing, the, we feel a similar feeling. And what that is, is 
pi, what's called piezoelectricity. Our bodies have this ability to produce electricity when jostled, squeezed, rubbed, pressed, and we can create that whether we want to or not, we are. And piezo, piezo mean, in Greek means press. And piezoelectricity is well known in science and it's used in heaters as, um, to create a spark to start a, a flame. A cigarette lighters, some of them have that. The, so we can feel that. That, I think, stimulates the chi and subsides as two things now, that piezoelectricity, which dies off, but then there's also the stimulation of the chi, which we feel also. It's hard to know the difference. Third one is our neural electricity, which we use to contract muscles and to do all the movements that we do all day long. Everything we do is electrical. So that we can learn to do. It's called, I think it's called Neijin, internal strength. We can send that electricity to the water in our cells, I believe, or in our tissues to extend, to make them strong, exert strength. And that I think is the way that is um, the hallmark of Tai Chi to that kind of strength, not contractive strength. And that is an electricity that we can definitely feel. It becomes so strong when I do Nei Jin that it's almost too much for my body. It's, it's very, very intense. That dies off and that also stimulates the Qi. So, in my view, it's important to understand the difference between these three forms of electricity that we feel, or movement in the case of qi, because in order to, uh, in order to be able to um, utilize them maximal, maximally, we need to, maximally, we need to be able to understand what each one is. So this may be just a start, but it's something that I think about and feel is important. Thank you.